Yeah, man. Okay, this won't be long. I got some interesting things coming across my drop desk here, but first I'd like to say fair use in your caboose bone to hijack city. Fair use, man. Uh, we're going to surf the wave a couple of things that have come across the drop desk. Maybe watch a couple videos about different subjects. But within all that, you know, we just want to do some criticizing, some comments, and some news reporting. We actually got a news clip, you know, uh, from a couple of news anchors going back and forth about some things, you know what I mean? Some stuff, man. <laughs> all right, we're taking it nice, uh, fast and loose around here, we're doing some education and some recon, man. Fair use in your caboose bone, Section 107, Copyright Act 1976. Can you dig it? Hey man, all right, all right. My Nagas, wow, we we almost there. And this is one of many checkpoints that you're gonna see us hit in real time. That's all I can say, you know. Um, to my Nagas that, you know, really see the fullness of the vision and jumped on this right away the way you've done. Um, I could just say, you know, maximum, you know, AI, maximum gratitude and maximum da wa da for you seeing the vision, you know, no one made you do it. No one made you believe in us, believe in me, but you do, you know what I mean? And I'm humbled by that. And I just want to, you know what I'm saying? Pop off. You know what I'm saying? It just makes me want to pop off. And, uh, you know, that's what's happening, man. We got a lot of movement happening this week, next week, you know, these, you know, every month, you know what I'm saying? We, we're going to keep this, uh, project very tight knit. And it's going to be happening in real time, you know what I mean? So if you have not, you know, just my noggins that, you know, maybe have not had an opportunity to uh, support, this is your time right now. Let's try to hit this goal this week, my nog. Um, You know, this would be amazing for us to have an excess of our goal, you know, so we can make sure we got enough supplies to at least begin a beautiful foundation. And, you know, if we need to add to it, we'll add to it. You know, if not... We can roll over whatever into the next project, which I'm telling you right now, it's going to be that water. So how cool, how amazing is it to, you know, watch a tribe build their land in real time, you know what I'm saying? And to really, really, you know, do more of a tutorial, you know, show Nagas, you know, what they can do on their own properties, their own land, you know, their own situation. So we want Nagaville popping off all over the place, man. This is just one place of many. Joy World is what we call it. You're helping us build our fence, blue, purple, red, white, linen, goat, thread. And my noggins, all my anonymous noggins, man, y'all been coming in hot <laughs> in real time, man. Eric Mays already, you already know, man. This is a repeat code keeper, repeat, you know what I'm saying, uh, contributor. He said, it's our responsibility to look out for each other. And you know how we rocking only with the code hijack free. And we make no treaties. Could be KTC forever. <laughs> the most high over everything. Allow, I can't say nothing else, man. I can't say nothing else. Copper color 144. Every chance I get, I appreciate y'all. KTC, MHOE. All praise the most high. Allow, why not, my naga? If you're watching this, when I say we have a tight knit community, a tight knit flow, a lot of us never met before. It's all vibration. You know, hijack can't really infiltrate the frequency because. We're tapped into the frequency. We're not just some, you know, a group of people just with some like minds trying to do some like minded stuff. Now we are coming together in a vibration. We only get there by keeping the code and then we can recognize it. We could flow. It don't mean we got, you know, some perfection happening, but we are being perfected every day by meditating on the code of Hawa. So that's what you see in common with the bro Eric Mays. And the sister Copper Color 144, by the way, support her brand new channel, Copper Color Creation, on YouTube, man. Matter of fact, I'll try to remember to put a link below for it so you can go and uh, support my Aqua Copper Color 144. She just popped off with some melanin and drop that is mind blasted, man. So get in that class from Copper Color, well, uh, Copper Color Creation, Copper Color 144. And yeah, so you see the most highs over everything. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you see, it's a KTC most high over everything. Keeping the code is the common denominator. You know what I'm saying? Between that brother, that sister right there, 
and the rest of our ox and aquas. You know what I'm saying? But A.I.J. Joseph, Halawa, another common denominator, right? You're going to see a lot of Halawa. Why? Because we praise our framer and our shaper. <laughs> you know, got to hit the easy button on that, right? Halawa, peace, power, prosperity, prominence to the tribe. We got dragons on our wall. Halawa. Allow wa AJ Joseph popping off Eric Mays Allow wa Ka forever KTC the most high over everything Chadwick best all praise to the most high much love to the family children of light that rock on the frequency of our creator Hey ya hey ya hey man Allow wa hey ya hey ya come support you know what I'm saying we appreciate you most high over everything. That's all we're talking about. <laughs> so we ain't getting, you know, lost in the sauce, man. We know we're talking most high over everything. Five eyes, mind, we popping off, man. Look out for us, man. M-H-O-E. I'm honored. Y'all so deserve it. Every chance I get, I will drop a bag. Shout out to the whole Drop Nation family. We working on Copper Land right now. We KTC M-H-O-E. Look out for Copper Land. You know what I'm saying? All that is Nagaville. We rocking the same flag. <laughs> Look out for the Nagaville flags. Love the dragon child. They will be, um, you know, once we find a good distributor, you know what I'm saying, we'll be able to, you know, connect you, you know, for the low, you know what I'm saying, as low as they can go, you know, for the Nagaville flags. You know, I want to make sure they're affordable and everyone can get one, uh, whether you want the, the you know, a uh, big Bertha flag like I got, you know, I think it's like four by six, four foot by six foot. I think that's the standard flow, but yeah, you can get the small joints, the bumper stickers, like we're going to make all that available. Look out for the Nogginville flag. You can rock it on copper land, whatever land you got, you rocking the Nogginville flag, you know what I'm saying? That's what is, uh, you know, connecting and connecting the con, you know what I mean? That's going to connect the con from place to place, you know what I mean? I'm talking Nogginville, man. Let's go. For the tribe, for Joy World, for Joy World, man. Anybody, you know, hold up, man. In case y'all might have forgot, my broke dragon child, man. My broke dragon child, man. <laughs> oh, man. Ooh, super duper, super flag. I'm talking Nagaville. This flag gonna be on all the Nagaville land. This is a peaceful flag. It's a peaceful flag because we are protecting the peace of the Nagas. You know what I'm saying? Our peace ain't they peace. We know that. It's a peaceful flag. It's a flag of Shalawam because we know that we're going to be a strong wall of protection. Give the best we got. Make the greatest stand. Make the greatest rise. Make the greatest coon because we are a wa. Blue, purple, red. White let it go thread. So look out for these. You can, you know, get the bumper sticker flow, you know what I'm saying? Get the small mini flags, you know what I'm saying? You know, just different things. Get the bandanas, man. The bro had a great idea on that. And all proceeds go to Nagaville. All proceeds go to buying land and building land for the Naga, man. The same thing we've been doing. This will really help us out extremely. So just look out for ways to support the Nagaville flow. We got the Nagaville shirts and hats also flowing out, you know. Very soon for you, man, on the regular, man. So, hey, look out for the new drop shot, man. Hey, hi to my IT, Naga Markel. I know he's popping off, man. <laughs> he's like, yeah, man, I got you, Khan. I got you, Khan. I'm excited, man. I'm excited for the new website. I'm excited for the new drop shot. I'm excited for the new vibe suites. Remember the vibe suites, my Naga? Where Nagas can go and get a nice vibration. You want ebony eyes. You want soulful music, man. What you want? You want that basement, man? You want that, you know, old school hip hop flow? Oh, no, no. You want that relaxing flow, man? You just want to hear some dolphins or something, man? You can, you know, enjoy your vibe. They call Vibe Suites at 432thedrop.com. All that's coming back. Remember the flutes? Oh, man, the Zon flutes. Oh, I'm going I'm to have a special dragon room, you know, only for the dragons on the wall. You know what I'm saying? Only for the dragons on the wall. Look out for it, man. Yeah, man. All right, man. All right, man.
I just appreciate all your Wilma Bates. I believe in what you're doing. All praise to our creator. You don't see nothing else being praised but our Hawa Ama Abba. Remember Proverbs 4 say to extol her, extol her, praise her. Proverbs 4, Ama Abba, Hawa. Your mother, father, frame of shaper, always been here for you. <laughs> Allow why for the tribe for Joy World, man. So y'all doing it for Joy World. All my Nagas, you know, checking in. You're doing it for Joy World. Please keep doing it for Joy World. Allow why click the link below. Pause the video. Click the link below and please show support. Let's get to the $10,000 goal. We are about 1800 away. Let's get there, man. I mean... <laughs> Anaga, this fence is going to be something that we can all say we took part of. You know, get your name on the wall. All my Nagas here are going to have their name on the wall. Even my anonymous Nagas, man, we're going to have your name on the wall. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, just imagine it. And so it will be. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? So, all y'all, I know you do it for the realness. You know what I'm saying? And um, you believe in us, man. You believe in what we're saying. You believe in what we're doing. How hard we're fighting to be hijacked free. This ain't no propaganda, man. We weren't supposed to be here on YouTube talking like this, talking about this. We weren't supposed to be here, man. But Allah for the frame and shaper, for the ingredients to put a fine meal together. So we are here. And you've been here from the tip top. Hey, hey, how to peculiar joy. You know what I'm saying? We're talking Joy World, Aqua Type Battle, what he do, down the bar, oh man. Edward Sadawai, man, I see, you, bro. Cutter Mayo from day one, Robert Scarupa, Brian Wilson, Otter Davis, all my noggers, man. Jerkery Strickland, Unifers, Carlos Johnson, Eric Hort, Frederick Baker, man. Zion Train, a wise humble servant, Sabal and Amar, Contessa Taylor, all my noggers, man. You see it, man, you see it, man. You see it, man. 500 cold keeping Nagas. 500 cold keepers. It only takes $20 a piece to get to $10,000. So we're almost there. We're right there. You know what I mean? This is nothing for us to continue to make sure we hit this mark. You know, we can have that, you know, under our belt. That, you know, we just raised $10,000 as a community to build a fence on an entire acre of land. Blue, purple, red, white, linen, and gold thread. So think about the cost. You know, all this is still, you know, to be determined, right? Because it's a big project. But, you know, you got building materials, you got tools, you got you got the paint when we talk about blue, purple, red, the seal and all that stuff for the fence and all that, man. So and then we might, you know, fortify it maybe with some cinder blocks or something, man. So, you know, we wanna make make sure we got all that, man. Then we got, you know, you know, Nagas coming out, you know what I'm saying? Nagas needing, you know what I'm saying, you know, food to go off, you know, so so they can build. Nagas needing shelter so that they can, you know, have a, a shower at night and then pop off, man. So, you know, this is all supporting the entire mission, the entire, you know, project, the entire flow. And uh, we want to make sure, you know, Nagas is comfortable. Nagas able to do it with a smile. Bellies are fed and the fence is popping off, you know what I'm saying? It's a big project, so... The Wada for Baruch and us, you know, with everything you're doing, um, you know, helping us get these materials in order, helping us get Managas, you know, you know, just joyful and joy world. You know, we can now be joyful, you know, no matter what. We about to talk about, <laughs> we about to take this and go into zombie apocalypse. So you know why I'm taking so long on joy world, man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and if you got to deal with what we about to just go into right now, I mean... These are just theories. I'm not a medical expert. I'm not going against any medical experts. I done told you to whom it may concern. I let you through the door. All right. I let you pull up a seat. We had a conversation. Ace, Ace is still in the place. You know what I'm saying? Ace already know. He rocks with the home team. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Enough said. All right. So, you know, we're going to do a couple things, talk about some theories touch back on the ski, maybe, you know, get into some flat drop, uh, interesting theory about 
some of this moon and sun action. We're doing it all right here. And we're talking zombies. But that's why we're spending so long on Joy World. Because all that don't mean nothing if you ain't got your own land, your own wall of protection, <laughs> and your own separation. And none of that makes any sense if you ain't got no code. If you got chaos, ain't no point in having your own land and separation. Because you're just going to have chaos. And even though, you know, you always deal with a certain element of static, you know what I'm saying? But, man, when you encode, you at least have a measuring, you know, a measuring device. You know what I'm saying? You're able to measure that static with something. You got a measuring tool, a measuring stick. You know what I mean? You can keep the static at bay with the code. You can say, is this encode or out of code? And you can't debate with a nog about that because it's a vibration. You know. You already know. So you want to go somewhere where everybody know your name, man. Hey, welcome to Joy World. Help us build a fence, a wall of protection for Joy World. Managa. Please click that link below if you haven't yet. And you know what I'm saying? Please, uh, let's finish strong, man. Let's let's show them how we do it, man. Let's show Hijack City how Naga feel rocks, how Naga feel rocks, how Naga feel rocks. Let's show Hijack City that Naga can and will fortify a tribe. Plant they seeds. <laughs> Plant their asparagus. Love to Takum say, let's go, man. <laughs> Takum say, said, nah, man, not that asparagus, bro. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you. Man, it's all happening, man. We need a wall of protection. Blue, purple, red, white, linen, gold thread. And shout out my bro, Tech. They got to uh, go fund me, I think. I don't know if it's on text page, on IG, or your queen, but... You know, hit up tech, man. You know what I'm saying? On IG, to Coombe say 432 and ask how you can support his GoFundMe as well, man. We need Nagas fortifying, man. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, hop tech. Hey, hop to the Aqua and the family, the entire tech tribe. Hey, hop to all y'all, man. Let's let's hit all these marks. We're hitting all these marks because we can. Because we can and we will. My Naga for Joy World. Click the link below. Help us get there. <sighs> Amazon service terms. Yeah, man. I went there. Yeah, I went right there, man. I went right here. Let's just get this. <laughs> hey, man, it's going to be the best drop of all time. It's going to be the best drop of all time. <laughs> now, let's go, man. This is the Amazon service terms. I know uh, this has been circling around, circulating, you know, for some time. Um... Man, love to my bro. I think his name is uh, Neta Netar Yahoo Netar Yahoo. Sorry for my mispronouncing it. Hey, how to you, bro? I saw it on your page today. It got me connecting to zombie stuff. Man, I didn't even bring back up the black fungi. Remember the black fungi trap? Go get that. Look, I am not a medical expert. I do not want to debate a medical expert. I just want to you know, share a stream of thought, you know, um, that we can build with, you know, for fair use purposes, you know, do some criticism on things and stuff, you know. So, yeah, this is Amazon uh, service term. Let's read it together. Acceptable use, safety, critical systems, your use of the lumber yard materials must comply with the AWS acceptance use policy. The l lumber yard material are not intended for use with life critical or safety critical systems such as use and operation of medical equipment. So you're like, what is lumber yard, right? You're talking about like lumber, you know, like a, like wood. All right, we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. Such as use and operation of medical equipment, automated transport, transportation systems, all autonomous vehicles, aircraft, or air traffic control. Okay. I know we're not just talking wood then if we're talking autonomous vehicles and transportation systems and medical equipment. What's that got to do with lumber, right? Aircraft or air traffic control. What's that got to do with lumber material? Nuclear facilities, manned spacecraft, military use in connection with live combat. We're talking about wood and sticks? What are you talking about? 
However, this restriction will not apply in the event, listen up, of the occurrence certified by the United States Centers for Disease Control. Right? I'm just reading it off the page, right? Now, whenever you look up this stuff, they're going to act like it's some type of tongue-in-cheek. Oh, that was just a tongue-in-cheek uh, promotional way of getting people excited about Lumberyard and Amazon. Does this look like some type of tongue-in-cheek play-play scenario to you, my naga? This is the terms and service conditions. These are the service terms. I'm at 4210. All right, this is the Amazon AWS service terms, 2021. Let me get a drink of my um, gym bottle. Hey, go uh, get the Natural By Law gym bottles, my naga, naturalbylaw.net. I got to charge up. Tastes like sweet water. Sweet water with I got the amethyst. It's a beautiful amethyst. Um, you know, one of those. Mine got a bunch of amethyst stones. You know what I'm saying? Some have like a like a solid amethyst. You know what I'm saying? Others will have like a solid obsidian. There's lots of different varieties, but you get the crystal charger. You know what I mean? And it really you know brings your water. You know what I mean? To a uh, a high energetic state for you. You know, it's really genius. Only available at naturalbylaw.net. Go get the gym bottle. G E M for the gym. Bang. Let's go. <laughs> 2021 Amazon. I'm on 4710. Wow. I'm just connecting this, right? I'm not an expert. This has nothing to do with. Anything happening today, I'm not debating anything up today. <laughs> Come on. Oh, man, where were we? They messed me up now. 4210. All right. So whatever this lumber yard is, right, must comply with the AWS acceptance use policy. Whatever this lumber yard is, it is not intended for use for any life critical safety, critical systems, any medical equipment, transportation, automated transportation systems. What's that? Autonomous vehicles. That's vehicles that drive by themselves, right? So they're saying like, don't use this for, don't use this programming for this stuff, but it's really saying that you can actually use this stuff for this stuff. So. What is this lumber yard? We're about to get into it. So it's saying that it's not intended for use, but it's also telling you that you can use it for all these things. For my technical knockers, you know what I'm saying? But you can only do it in the case of, in the occurrence of a widespread viral infection. I know this got nothing to do with today. This got I'm really I'm really talking about Tuskegee. So everything I'm saying is about Tuskegee, about the Nuremberg Code, the Tuskegee experiment, human test subjects, Nuremberg Code, factual things. Not debatable. This has nothing to do with today's times at all. I'm not talking about anything happening today. Nothing. No relation. Because I'm just talking to Skig. You see, look, these same people right here, Center for you know, Control, Center for Control, right? <laughs> yeah. They've been talking zombies. They make it seem like they're just having fun with it. 
but they've been talking zombies since 2011. These same people, when we talk to Tuskegee, the Tuskegee study of untreated syphilis and the Negro Naga nigga male, the black man, was an ethically abusive study conducted between 1932 and 1972 by the United States Public Health Service and the Center for <gasps> Control. Same people talking zombies. Same people Talking a widespread viral infection transmitted via bites. Woo. Woo ha ha. I got you all to check. This got nothing to do with your day. I'm just singing Buster Rhymes. Woo ha. Woo ha. Woo ha. Got you all to check. I'm just singing a Buster Rhymes song. This has nothing to do with any connectivity of what we're experiencing in today's times. Woo ha. Got you all in check. Viral infection transmitted via bites or contact with bodily fluids that causes human corpses to reanimate. You die, you come back reanimated. And seek to consume. Oh, you see, you say, whoa, whoa, this is Amazon, people. We're talking games. Yeah, Lumberyard is connected with a program. Some type of, it seems like some type of virtual reality coding, you know, that, that you can use to build your own games. You know, they're trying to make you really build their, their future. You know what I'm saying? Their virtual future. Lumberyard is connected to some type of virtual situation, but what does it got to do with the zombies? A widespread viral infection transmitted via bites or contact with bodily fluids that cause human corpses to reanimate and seek to consume human flesh, blood, brain, or nerve tissue, and is likely to result in the fall of organized civilization. This has nothing to do with today's times. We're just talking to Skiggy. <laughs> We're just talking the center for the <gasps> control. The same center for the <gasps> control. That been talking zombie. The center for the control. Huh? Huh, man? That experiment on a group of 400 Negro men. Center for Control experimented on at least 400 Negroes, Nagas, right? African Americans. So why are they talking zombie? And what do they have to do with Amazon? Because this restriction, this restriction on whatever software, whatever hardware, whatever, whatever you're downloading when you play with this stuff, this restriction only applies until there's some type of event. Then the restriction's off and you can use this lumberyard material for life critical, safety critical systems, Operation of medical equipment, automated transportation systems, autonomous vehicles, aircraft, air control, traffic control, <laughs> what? nuclear facilities, what? Manned spacecraft, what? Or military use in connection with live combat. Whoa. Are they really showing the play hey, hey, that they intend to use? Whatever this is for this, they like to put it at the end, the stuff they really want, you know, spacecraft, nuclear facilities, military use in connection with live combat. 
live combat against who? Because this whole thing has to be certified by the Center for the Control that already been uh, doing live combat on the Naga or uh, the Negro male in which more than 100 died as a result which goes against everything in their own code I'm talking their code out the British Medical Journal number 7070 volume 313 page 1448 December 7 1996 the Nuremberg Code. Yeah. Yeah, man. You're supposed to weigh the risk. This code is established. The principles are established for medical practice now have been extended into the general codes of medical ethics. So we're just talking the general codes. General codes of medical ethics that are applied today. And now accepted worldwide. Ten standards which physicians must conform when carrying out experiments on human subjects. We're just talking to Ski. For more than 100 died as a result. These people thought they were getting treatment for what? Bad blood. They were in duress. That's part of. You know, the code is that you can't, you know, take advantage of people in duress. These people want a treatment, man. The men were promised free medical care. Never informed them of their syphilis diagnosis or that they were injected with this stuff. They, they didn't know it's the word syphilis never came up to them. Instead, they were given fake ass drugs, disguised placebos, ineffective methods, man. Diagnostic procedures as treatment for bad blood. They were given everything fake. Somebody left a great comment like, you know, they, they wanted to see how much the Naga could heal themselves by thinking that they're getting you know, real medicine and their minds are powerful. So some of them were actually healing themselves, you know what I'm saying? I wonder which ones, you know. Man, they were studying the Naga's brain capacity, man, to heal themselves from this dog headedness. Who's responsible for this? 40-year experiment that just ended in 1972, so don't act like it's old news. United States Public Health Service and the Center for the <gasps> Control and Prevention. Same people talking. Zombies. We'll get there. Just know that Amazon has safety terms, or excuse me, service terms. And something with this lumber yard, man, seems real fishy because it seems to have a lot of capability. If you had, if you got to put a disclaimer that is not intended for the use of, you know, life critical systems and you know, saying um, nuclear facilities and military use in connection with live combat this restriction will not apply in the event of the occurrence certified by the united states centers for the control or successor body whoever succeeds <laughs> the center for the control right now all restrictions are off if there's a widespread viral infection. Man, I can just meditate on this. <laughs> Which means what? Since there's a widespread, you know, look, man. Hypothetically speaking, if this was happening today, all bets would be off. And now, 
Amazon can now say we're partnered with the who? Who's that? Military use in connection with live combat, right? So we're partnered with the military, right? Because oh, there's no more restrictions since there's a widespread viral situation transmitted via bites or contact with bodily fluids. Wear your mask, right? This gives them the okay to now use this magical stuff here, coating and whatever militarized stuff found in this lumber yard material, quote unquote, for live combat, transportation systems, autonomous vehicles, and the works, right? So what the hell is this lumber yard? <laughs> yeah. Scripting for the Lumberyard Framework. Now if you've created assets and defined them in your gaming using the slices, entities, and components, you have an empty level or world to roam, but where's the game? That's where the scripting comes in. Lumberyard includes two scripting technologies for creating logic and behaviors, script canvas and lure. Script canvas is a visual scripting environment. They're making you create your own world, right? Sounds you know, uh, benign enough. No problem there. That's a good way to practice your coding. Well, what the hell does it got to do with the military? What the hell is it? What are they using it for? I mean, you know, not the bull crap, but the stuff that's really good that you create. Who's going to own that? <laughs> they just gave you the play. They told you what they're going to use this entire platform. <laughs> this whole thing will be used for what? We just got it. Military use in connection with live combat. It's like you're writing your own script, you know. It's like the one is the program. Our own matrix. They're not even creative enough to make the world for for us, right? They, they want us to make it for ourselves. How does Lumberyard work? Amazon Lumberyard provides a complete end-to-end -end environment for developing and delivering games and simulations. They want us to create our own world. They want us to... You, they want you to be with your crypto and your sims, you know, you got money somewhere in the block, you know, <laughs> you got your whole simulation popping off. You got you know, people buying apartments. <laughs> they got apartments, you know, that they're really buying in this virtual world that they can virtually go to. Man, either you get real, real or you're about to get fake, fake. I don't mind, you know having the knowledge of all these things, you know, do your crypto, you know, as long as you can make it make bread for you, as long as you can make it work for you, it work anything that's legal and it's all good. It ain't going to get you caught up. You know what I mean? Work anything productive, my nigga. you know, just don't get caught up and put in a hundred percent of yourself into some other reality is all I'm saying. It says right here, it supports a variety of platforms. Right. So they just told you it has a wide variety of uses, <laughs> including consoles, mobile devices. Oh, virtual reality. And how do they use that for live combat? Windows PC. So it's such a large development environment. Since it's such a large development environment with so many different features and tools, it can be intimidating to new new users, especially for those who don't have a traditional developer background. This topic covers the various parts of Lumberyard at a high level and the common ways you can work with it depending on your role or task as a new or experienced game developer or designer. All right, so you can, you know, scroll through this and, you know, check out all these things which you need to know. This is kind of scary. That's something involving scripting, you know, scripting and codes. 
needs a disclaimer that says, however, this restriction would not apply in the event of wait. Well, Lumberyard materials are not intended for use of life critical safety critical systems such as in use and operation of medical equipment, automated transportation systems, autonomous. So everything's robotic, right? Automated transportation, uh, autonomous vehicles, aircraft traffic control, nuclear facilities, manned spacecraft, or military use in connection with live combat like what does all this scripting have to do with all that it's not intended for use unless unless however unless which means it is intended if <laughs> in the event of the occurrence of widespread viral infection transmitted via bites or contact with bodily fluids that cause human corpses to reanimate and seek to consume living human flesh. What? So if that pops off, you can use this coding software. You can use it for live combat, you know. Now, how can you weaponize VR? How can you weaponize virtual reality? When does virtual reality become intertwined with reality enough for it to be effective in live combat? What does this have to do with the zombie consuming human flesh, blood, brain, or nerve tissue likely to result in the fall of human organized civilization? Well, you know organized civilization <laughs> so they have to create their own organization right their own order through what chaos which is why we talking zombie what does the zombie cdc apocalypse and amazon web service service terms have in common oh man this is from edcdeveloper.wordpress.com. All right, they put it together for us right here. We just got it. This is so insane, especially when you consider that the CDC has an entire section on zombie preparedness, as well as the mind control potential liability of graphene, graphene now proven to be in the chat. Oh, boy. I'm not a medical expert. We are not experts. This has nothing to do with today's time. This has everything to do with, you know, Amazon and their, you know, connection maybe with the Tuskegee experiment since it's the same damn people involved in both situations. And even they're talking about zombies. Right. Oh, yeah, there are all kind of emergencies out there we can be, be prepared for. Take a zombie apocalypse, for example. Oh, it's just a funny thing, right? Tongue in cheek. Take a zombie apocalypse, for example. That's right, I said zombie apocalypse. You may now, you may laugh now, but when it happens, you'll be happy you read this. Whoa. No more sound like that demon came out. Like, you may laugh now, but when it happens, you'll be happy you read this. And hey, maybe you'll even learn a thing or two about how to prepare for a real emergency. Yeah, so they put it right in our face, Paul. For real, for real, man. I'm going to leave all these links for you, man. You know, Resident Evil. And yada, you know, they, they want to, you know, throw all that distraction out there and make it seem like this is fake, but it's real, but it's fake, but it's real. They're going to give you some basic things. And hey, get some, get some dropout. You know, do all these things. Do all them things. But they are saying... Zombie apocalypse, right? And here's when it kind of gets real. It says, if zombies did start roaming the streets, CDC will conduct an investigation much like any other disease outbreak. CDC would provide technical assistance to cities, states, and international parties, partners dealing with the zombie infestation.
this don't sound like no joke no more, right? It says, this assistance might include consultation, lab testing, and analysis, patient management, and care, tracking of contacts, tracking, tracking of contacts. We are hearing a lot about this type of tracking stuff these days. That's true. Infection control. I mean, ain't there, isn't there an app for that right now that they can track whoever's, you know, affected or infected or whoever got this? Ain't there an app, app for that? I thought we were just joking about the zombie stuff. Now it got real. The assistance might include consultation, lab testing, analysis, patient management, and care tracking of contacts and infection control, including isolation and quarantine. Whoa. We sure to get programmed. We, we, we sure got that program in our head bone now, right? That don't sound like some far off stuff no more, does it, my naga? But this ain't got nothing to do with anything today. We just talking to Skig. And the same people connected to both projects. They talking zombies. It's likely that an investigation of this scenario would seek to accomplish several goals to determine the cause of the illness, the source of the infection, virus, toxin, learn how it is transmitted and how readily it is spread, how to break the cycle of transmission and thus prevent further cases and how patients can best be treated. Not only would scientists be working to identify the cause and cure of the zombie, zombie, zombie outbreak, but CDC and other federal agencies would send medical teams and first responders to help those in affected areas. Don't sound like no joke no more. You can join the zombie task force if you like. The CDC Foundation, a nonprofit partner of the CDC, is offering Zombie Task Force t shirts. Yeah, it's just a game. It's just a game. Prepare this one on one for the zombie apocalypse. It's just a game, huh? Back to EDC developer says this is so insane, especially when you consider that the CDC has an entire section on zombie zombie preparedness as well as the mind control potential liability of graphene how you say that now proven to be in the tenderoni yeah Funded by the European Commission, the Graphene flagships aims to secure a major role for Europe in the ongoing technical revolution, helping to bring graphene innovation out of the lab and into commercial applications. Our leading annual conference, Graphene Week 2021, will take place online from uh, September 20th through the 24th. So ain't that today, my naga? Ain't that today? Come on, man. I can't make this stuff up. We just surfing a wave and we belly fly right into the graphene week annual conference right at the beginning. We didn't miss a day. We didn't miss a beat. Allow Hawa. Hey, we pulling up. It's online. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, we pulling up. It's all happening. It's all happening. Because what did they just say back here? Mind control, potential liability of graphene that's inside the tenderoni. Eeks. Eeks. I'm not a medical expert. This got nothing to do with nothing but Tuskegee, man. What was inside this situation where more than 100 died as a result? We just talk of the Nuremberg Code. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> See what the Nuremberg Code, man. Number one, the voluntary consent of the human subject is absolutely essential. But if you can't give no voluntary consent if you are not informed that you're a human subject. Get it? I'm just talking to Ski. 
This means that the person involved should have legal capacity to give consent, should be so situated as to be able to ex exercise free power of choice. Is it a choice or is it mandatory? I'm just talking to Skiggy. Without the intervention of any element of force, you can't force nothing. Fraud, deceit, there's a lot of deceit around Tuskegee. Duress, I just said that they was in duress. The men were not informed of the nature of the experiment. They were under duress. The men were promised free medical care. They were under duress. We're just talking to Skiggy. Nagas. Nagas on the wall. We're just talking to Skiggy. More than one hundred died as a result of this bullshit, man. I'm just talking to Skiggy. So can the Naga pop off and recon what's going on with the Naga and we can see what's happening and who's involved? Did they ever apologize to the Nagas for this, man? How many of our grandparents were affected? Man, it gets deeper, man. The Tuskegee study of untreated syphilis in African-American males is the longest non-therapeutic experiment on human beings in medical history, as noted by author L. Kaplan. Because in 1932, by the United States Public Health Service, and who, and who, see how they cut it out? Oh, it's nowhere to be found. And who? And who? United States Public Health Service and the Center for the Control, right? Center for the Control. Yeah, see, so they tried to cut it out here. They just gave you one of them, huh? Yeah, where's the other one, right? The study was purported, purportedly designed to determine the natural course of untreated latent syphilis in some 400 Nagas, African American men, indigenous copper colored cons in Tuskegee, Macon County, Alabama. The research studies, all of whom had syphilis when they were enrolled. Who we can't trust you to tell us they already had it. Shut your butts up, man. We don't trust you at all. We don't trust your data at all. Trying to tell me all these Nagas walked in with syphilis. Shut that shit up, man. They came for what you called bad blood, right? Or you tried to, you tested them and told them they had bad blood. There was no confirmation on that. They all had syphilis. Shut that shit up. Now we got to question everything. Did they have it or did they contract it through the experiment? When they were enrolled in the study, contrary to urban myth that holds black men in Alabama were injected with the virus. Oh, that's the urban myth. According to who? A mother bugger. Who's claiming it to be a quote urban myth? Who's writing this? Carol? Carol Hetzen, Hetzelzelman? We got to take Hessels was men's, you know, uh, word for that this is an urban myth. What she know about the urban community, Carol? What you know about the urban community, Carol? We got to ask the questions. You ain't got no say so once it's our people being terminated. Once it's our people being locked in and targeted, we can we can investigate whether they had it or not without you claiming it to be a myth. Curl. Man, stuff makes me sick, man. 
it's hard to talk about. Because y'all supposed to have codes. These Nagas were in duress. These Nagas were not informed. The men were not informed of the nature of the experiment. The men were not informed. What's the code? What's their code? Voluntary consent of the human subject is absolutely essential. Among other requirements, the document enunciates the requirement of voluntary informed consent of the human subject. For it to be voluntary, they need to be informed to give their consent. For the con to consent, he needs the information. Then he can choose or volunteer to be a human subject. This has nothing to do with today, huh? Nothing like this going on today. The men were not informed of the nature of the experiment and more than 100 died as a result, my naga. So what was in this stuff? Was it just syphilis? Anything to do with uh, what he say again? Yeah. Oh, anything to do with uh, mind control? You know, once someone, you know, theoretically, because we don't know, we're not ex we're not experts. So I'm just asking the question. You know, once someone has this potential liability of mind control, you know, on your mind ball. What will they do? How will they be controlled? Who will they be controlled by? Uh, who are these people behind the veil? Well, we about to find out. Because <laughs> they got a conference popping off, man. September 20th to the 24th, 2021. It's Graffini Week. Uh-oh. I mean, just for fun. This this sounds sounds like some type of <laughs> deity or something. I don't know. Is there a deity named Graffini? Uh, oh, is there a goddess named Graffini? I don't know. Graffini. The world. Yeah, huh? What's this? I'm just belly flopping, man. This is real easy at this point, man. You know, just fall back and enjoy the wave with you. Enjoy the wave with you. So why did Venus come up, man? That's very interesting, man. Must be some connection with this Venus situation. They, they they talking tenderoni. It's a uh -huh. I don't know what's going on here, man. I think we're breaking the <laughs> we're breaking the algorithm, man. It's the first thing that popped up is Venus. Okay. An e book called The Wonders of Graphene. What's that? <laughs> is this about you know, Amazon, and, you know, what's, what's this stuff supposed to be? Uh, they ain't going to give me no. I'm trying to see some type of a preview or something, man. Man, what is a graffiti? Uh, this looks real suspect, right? <laughs> I'm just digging on it with you. Y'all let me know if y'all find something on this, you know. As God of Dragons, what's that? Hatred, Ooh. 
or some type of dragon lance drop or some dragon drop maybe some video game drop or something yeah some type of uh but you know they they got a lot of drop in them games we know that man is there a graffiti over here man let's see I don't see graffiti over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's kind of, you know, I'm going to make sure I bookmark that. <laughs> I might need to dig on that stuff, man. Might need to dig on this, man. I'm just going to say drag and drop. You, know, you never know what you're going to find when you, uh, Start the belly flop, you know, that's what we do do. That's what we do do around here. Yeah, man. You can see we uh on the we right there on the toe bones of this hijack city, man, with this graffiti situation. Uh-huh. Yeah, man. <laughs> we on the ass. We on the ass, man. Let's go. So y'all can check out the conference. What the zombie apocalypse is all about, you know. Let's keep going, man. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Yeah, Fox, Fox even reported on the zombie stuff. Had this link up. Come on, man. All right. As 2021 progresses amid a global pandemic, questions about a possible zombie apocalypse are swarming the Internet, according to Nostradamus. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We got some Nostradamus Oracle drop. Let's go. 2021 will be packed with events that will forever shape the future of humanity. All right, what, what does he say? Someone here says Nostradamus predicted it centuries ago. Here comes the zombie apocalypse according to the annual horoscope. So is there a prediction of a 2021 zombie apocalypse? Can't get to it, man. So it says he predicted that in 2021 a scientist would go. <laughs> man, y'all, I mean, y'all, y'all fact check this for me, man. They, they're saying Nostradamus, one of the most famous predictors of all, of all time. <laughs> he predicted that in 2021 a scientist would create a biological weapon, right? Not an accidental natural disease, right? But a a scientist would create a biological weapon. I'm just reading Nostradamus, Hijack City, to whom it may concern. I'm not going against your experts. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying what did Nostradamus say? Okay. A scientist would create a biological weapon and produce a virus that can turn humankind into zombies. Is that why we have these zombie warnings in Amazon? Widespread infection, bodily fluids, human corpses reanimated. We're just talking Amazon lumberyard. We're just talking virtual reality. It's not real. It's not real. We're just talking graphene, man. Fertility issues. Red pills for the tenderoni. Man, y'all y'all look at the studies, man. You know, they're breaking it down here, man. This is what we got it for. EMF readings coming off of uh people that, you know, got the you know, you know tenderoni, you know. People are astronomically higher they are. So they, they are astronomically high. The EMF reading is coming off of some of my nagas that already got hit up, they're saying. So graphene nanofiber pube worms form a kind of antenna within the body. The, the tenderoni 
activates the antenna. And then the 5G, remember all that connection with the Wuhan. When Wuhan popped off, and 5G was just being rolled out. A lot of people reported on this. So we're just, you know, we're just talking Tenderoni or Tuskegee, you know what I'm saying? So they got 5G rollouts, right? Can't control the individual. So the tenderoni activates the antenna, and then the 5G can control the individual in who knows how many different ways. You need a bing bang. This is not, you know, they playing chess, not checkers. <laughs> we're going to talk some boosters and stuff on the way out. You know, we're going to let some news anchors debate. We're going to fall back and just let them rock. We're not experts. They're not experts. We're all asking questions, and that's it. We're not going against your experts. We're not saying anything as a fact. I am no expert. Let's go. It appears that 5G, you know, can have very similar symptoms as, you know, some of these, you know, uh, symptomatic situations. All right, so... What does this got to do with, with becoming an antenna, Managa, and then being controlled, all right, being manipulated? All right, what does this graphene have to do with what they're calling these nanobots? Infertility. And uh, potential liability of mind control. We got to recon this graphene a little more. Funded by European Commission, the graphene flagships aims to secure a major role for Europe in the ongoing technological revolution. Here we go. AI, singularity, natural by law, take the wheel, helping to, to bring graphene innovation out of the lab and into commercial applications. And what's these applications really hitting for? Billion dollar budget for it, though. Adult male Worcester rats were exposed to repeated doses of nanoscale graphene oxide NGO for 15 days and 30 days. Results of the study demonstrated that one interperitoneal exposure to NGO at 10 milligrams uh, BW reduced sperm motility and sperm count while increased sperm abnormality. Just talking what some people are reporting from their test in their science labs on this particular material that has to something that has something to do with this EMF. That's something to do. I mean, hey, copyright disclaimer section 107, copyright acts 1976 allows, allows is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comments, news reporting. We're just doing some news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing nonprofit, educational, and personal use. Tips to balance in favor of fair use. Whew, back, back, hijack. We're just popping off. Psychoelectronic weapon effects. What? This is pretty heavy. This is heavy stuff. Anyone being able to control anything, becoming any type of antenna, man. All right? Because this activates the antenna. And then the 5G can control the individual. This is what they're reporting at EDC Developer. We don't know if it's real. We're not experts. But, you know, just read it. Just read it. So are they just telling you to be prepared for no reason or that they can start reanimating shit around here? Right? Reanimate. <laughs> Widespread infection, bodily fluids, human corpses reanimate. Consume living human flesh. 
Play, play. Play, play or nah. Play, play or nah. <laughs> Y'all tell me in the comments, man. Play, play or nah, man. You know what I mean? Let's go. Let's go, man. Fox News, like I said, saying similar things. All right, so you got the drop. You got the drop, man. Yeah, okay. Is it play play or not? Nostradamus predicted that in 2021, a scientist would create a biological weapon and, re and produce a virus that can turn humankind into zombies. Here is Nostradamus' quote, few young people, half dead to give a start, dead through spite, he will cause the others to shine. And in an exalted place, some great evils to occur, to occur, sad concepts will come to harm each one. Temporal dignify the mass to succeed. Fathers and mothers dead of infinite sorrows, women in mourning, the pestilent she monster, the great one to be no more, all the world to end. Now, is that 2021? I don't know. I don't know. But that's why we are building a fence for Joy World. Please support because we need, <laughs> we need. A wall of protection. You need something. Shit, you need something, man. All right. It's a start. Got to start somewhere. Help us with our... It's a great start. A great, you know, a great step, man. A large, gigantic step for us. So be a part of this step. And, yeah, you'll get your name on the wall, man. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's an honor, you know what I mean, to be supported by the real ones, man. So you know, that's a little bit into the zombie situation i want to um catch this drive right here back to the nuremberg and this is back in 2018 this is a quick eight minute drop to give us some more explanation meaning and definition of the nuremberg code and uh you know we got that drop right here You know, it's easy to find and download it. You know, just search it. You can download it nice and easy. And, you know, we got a few. You know, we got all these last time. So get the drop. You know what I'm saying? I'll link that below, too. You know what I mean? So get all the drop. Because the experiment should be so conducted as to avoid all unnecessary physical and mental suffering and injury. The men were not informed. And more than a hundred died as a result. So that's what 1932, this is 1947. So this is 15 years. There was no coat. They were going crazy on my Nagas in Tuskegee. There was no coat in 1932. The coat didn't pop off until when? 1947. They were not informed, right? The men were not informed. You're supposed to be able to exercise free power if you only knew, if the Tuskegee Nagas only knew that they were in a human experiment, they could say, we want to put this experiment to an end. We're done with this experiment. We want to end this experiment. They can do that according to the code. They can exercise free power of choice without the intervention of any element of force. You can't force these Nagas to be a part of your experiment to make them get anything without any long-term testing. We need at least two years of clinical trials on Nagas before, you know what I'm saying? You know, we're just talking to Skiggy. Can't be no fraud involved. 
deceit or the rest. You can't make Nagas think that without this thing, they're going to die and suffer and die and suffer. You just put them in a duress, fraud and deceit, overreaching all day. And other ulterior forms of constraint or coercion, man. Constraint. Censoring the information. Censoring the noggin. We just talking to ski coercion. And should have sufficient knowledge and comprehension of the elements of the subject matter involved. But these men were not informed. They didn't know. No one brought up the word syphilis to these, you know. No one brought up syphilis to monogas, man. To our uncles, to our cousins, to our granddads, to our fathers, to our mothers. Because this ain't just about Tuskegee. We know there's multiple experiments we can talk about. Monogas, you already on Coon Coon, so you're already nine above with a Nagas. So, you know, we cool, we keeping it real smooth, pure water. This latter element requires that before the acceptance of an affirmative decision by the experimental subject, there should be made known to him the nature, duration, purpose of the experiment. These men were not informed. Enable him to make an understanding and enlightened decision. But these men were not informed. This latter element requires that before the acceptance of an affirmative decision by the experimental subject, that should be made known to him the nature, duration, purpose of the experiment, the method and means by which it is to be conducted. All inconveniences. You can't go to the store. Not when you got this... Uh, bad blood i'm just talking to skiggy all inconveniences you should already know anything in your health you should already know any hazards you should already know reasonably to be expected any effects upon his health or her health of person which may possibly come from his or her participation in the experiment Experiments should be such as to yield fruitful results for the good of society. That's the game they play. Because how do we determine what's for the good of society? We got to take their word for it, right? It should be unprocurable by any other means of study. You, if you got to experiment on, experiment on humans, it has to be such that there's no other ways to do it. You can't do it through animals. You can't do it through clones or any of that stuff, right? You got to do it. To regular Johnny Johnny B. Goods. You got to do it to the regular society, right? I mean, I'm just talking. My nog is in Tuskegee. Nah, man, that's against the code, man. Nah, just, the experiment should be so designed and based on the results of animal experimentation. Well, we, we, we need to see the paperwork, right? And a knowledge of the natural history of the disease or other problem under study that the anticipated results justify the performance of the experiment. But there is no knowledge of natural history. If there is no natural history, if what you're talking about ain't natural, when you're talking about zombie apocalypse, you're talking about something that, that happened out of the ordinary. This is not natural. Nature doesn't spark off zombie motherfucking apocalypses, man. Nah, nature don't do that. You know, stuff like this might do it, you know. Stuff like this might do it. I'm just talking that graphene, right? Something like this might do it. We don't know though. We're not experts. We're not experts. All right, let's get a couple minutes on this Nuremberg Code. 
And, you know, see what we got for the dismount here, man. Yeah, yeah, we, we got some great drive for the dismount. Let's go, let's go, let's back it on up. From the top, let's go. Code German Nuremberger Codex is a set of research ethics principles for human experimentation set as a result of the subsequent Nuremberg trials at the end of the Second World War. The origin of the Nuremberg Code began in pre-World War II German politics, particularly during the 1930s and 1940s. The pre-war German Medical Association was considered to be a progressive yet democratic association with great concerns for public health, one example being the legislation of compulsory health insurance for German workers. However, starting in the mid-1920s, German physicians, usually proponents of racial hygiene, were accused by the public and the medical society of unethical medical practices. The use of racial hygiene was supported by the German government in order to create an Aryan master race and to exterminate those who did not fit into their criteria. Racial hygiene extremists merged with National Socialism to promote the use of biology to accomplish their goals of racial purity, a core concept in the Nazi ideology. Physicians were attracted to the scientific ideology and aided in the establishment of... We're just talking to Skiggy, man. Racial hygiene. <laughs> Talk to these noggers about racial hygiene, why they were, you know, targeted for this experiment that they were not informed of the nature of this experiment. And more than a hundred, more than a hundred died as a result. Who was involved? Huh? You want to talk racial hygiene? This is 15 years before all the stuff she's talking about. So when she's, you know bringing her stuff up, just know that they've already uh, been popping off these experiments, you know what I'm saying? And the racial hygiene has already been targeted, and this wasn't the first targeted attack on these Nagas. So don't even start comparing, because these are the indigenous copper color cons found here. These are the Indians in India Superior that got massacred during the American Holocaust. So, you know, we want to talk Holocaust talking to the indigenous that got massacred by this hijack by this disease so who's controlling it who's the center for the controlling it <sighs> these men were not informed millions of them died not just a hundred millions of our nagas have died from uninformed biological chemical warfare since the beginning of the invasion we're talking real facts <laughs> yeah man we want to investigate something investigate that the slaughter of the naga in america the continuation of it and of national socialist physicians league in 1929 to purify the german medical community of jewish bolshevism Criticism was becoming prevalent. Alphonse Stouter, member of the Reich Health Office, claimed that the dubious experiments have no therapeutic purpose, and Frederick von Muller, physician and the president of the Deutsche Akademie, joined the criticism. In response to the criticism of unethical human experimentation, the Reich government issued guidelines for new therapy and human experimentation in Weimar, Germany. The guidelines were based on beneficence and non-malficence, but also stressed legal doctrine of informed consent. The guidelines clearly distinguished the difference between therapeutic and non-therapeutic research. Mm. For therapeutic purposes, the guidelines allowed administration without consent only in dire situations, but for non-therapeutic purposes any administration without consent was strictly forbidden. However, the guidelines from Weimar were negated by Adolf Hitler. By 1942, more than 38,000 German physicians were in the Nazi party, 
who helped carry out medical programs such as the sterilization law. After World War II, a series of trials were held to hold members of the Nazi party responsible for a multitude war crimes. The trials were approved by President Harry Truman in January 1946 and were led exclusively by the United States. They began on December 9, 1946 in Nuremberg, Germany, in what became known as the Nuremberg Trials. In one of the trials, which became known as the Doctor's Trial, German physicians responsible for conducting unethical medical procedures on humans during the war were tried. They focused on physicians that conducted inhumane and unethical human experiments in concentration camps, in addition to those who were involved in over 3,500,000 sterilizations of German citizens. Several of the accused argued that their experiments differed little from those used before the war and that there was no law that differentiated between legal and illegal experiments. On August 20, 1947, the judges delivered their verdict against Carl Brand and 22 others. In May 1947, while the trials were being held, six points defining legitimate medical research were submitted to the Council for War Crimes. Three judges, in response to expert medical advisors for the prosecution, adopted these points and added four additional points. The ten points constituted the Nuremberg Code, which includes such principles as informed consent and absence of coercion, properly formulated scientific experimentation, and beneficence towards experiment participants. It is thought to have been mainly based on the Hippocratic Oath, which was interpreted as endorsing the experimental approach to medicine while protecting the patient. The ten point Yeah, that Hippocratic Oath is something deep too, man. We gotta definitely dig on that. I got a couple more minutes, man. And let's get into some flat drop, man. Let's go. We have of the Nuremberg Code. One required is the voluntary, well informed, understanding consent of the human subject in a full legal capacity. Two, the experiment should aim at positive results for society that cannot be procured in some other way. Three. It should be based on previous knowledge, for example, an expectation derived from animal experiments that justifies the experiment. 4. The experiment should be set up in a way that avoids unnecessary physical and mental suffering and injuries. 5. It should not be conducted when there is any reason to believe that it implies a risk of death or disabling injury. 6. More than a hundred died as a result. The risks of the experiment should be in proportion to, that is, not exceed, the expected humanitarian benefits. 7. Preparations and facilities must be provided that adequately protect the subjects against the experiment's risks. 8. The staff who conduct or take part in the experiment must be fully trained and scientifically qualified. 9. The human subjects must be free to immediately quit the experiment at any point when they feel physically or mentally unable to go on. Do you sometimes feel physically and mentally unable to go on based on the experiments done to you, Managi? And if there was such an experiment done on the human race, would you not want the ability to end it? If you only knew that you were a human subject. But my Nagas were not informed in Tuskegee. On 10. Likewise, the medical staff must stop the experiment at any point when they observe that continuation would be dangerous. The Nuremberg Code has not been officially accepted as law by any nation or as official ethics guidelines by any association. In fact, the code's reference to Hippocratic duty to the individual patient and the need to provide information was not initially favored by the American Medical Association. The Western world initially dismissed the Nuremberg Code as a code for... Now I wonder why. Because whoever they call in the Western world were the same, you know, <laughs> folks they were just talking about doing it in the first place. And they wanted to continue to do it to you. So they didn't want no code. They wanted to be, you know, out of order. They wanted to be lawless. For barbarians and not for civilized physicians and investigators. 
Additionally, the final judgment did not specify whether the Nuremberg Code should be applied to cases such as political prisoners, convicted felons, and healthy volunteers. The lack of clarity, the brutality of the unethical medical experiments, and the uncompromising language of the Nuremberg Code created an image that the Code was designed for singularly egregious transgressions. However, the Code is considered to be the most important document in the history of the clinical research ethics, which had a massive influence on global human rights. The Nuremberg Code and the related Declaration of Helsinki are the basis for the Code of Federal Regulations Title 45 Part 46, which are the regulations issued by the United States Department of Health and Human Services for the ethical treatment of human subjects, and are used in institutional review boards, ERBs. In addition, the idea of informed consent has been universally accepted and now constitutes Article 7 of the United Nations International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. It also served as a basis for international ethical guidelines for biomedical research involving human subjects proposed by the World Health Organization. Well, all we know is that they ain't following it. <laughs> They're saying these these jabronis over here didn't even want nothing to do with it. They said, ah, that's that's for barbaric scientists. Well, they are those bar barbaric scientists. I mean, I don't need to say anything. I just got to prove it with this barbarism that the same people did to our people who were not informed. My naga should have been able to call off the experiment. During the course of the experiment, the human subject should be at liberty to bring the experiment to an end if he has reached a physical or mental state where the continuation of the experiment seems to him to be impossible. And whoever is in charge must be prepared to terminate the experiment at any stage if it has become prop if he has probable cause to believe in the ex exercise of good faith superior skill and careful judgment required of him that a continuation of the experiment is likely to result in injury disability or death to the experimental subject the men were not informed of the nature of the experiment in more than a hundred died as a result. They should have been able to call it off. But they weren't informed that they were human subjects. And I don't like that part of history because history seems to repeat itself sometimes. But if they can go back and if they knew that they were human subjects and even if they did voluntary, you know, volunteer for this, they should still have the power to call it off to end the experiment. At least knowing that they have the power will give them power. Because by the law, by the code, they could call it off and say, no more of this. We don't want no more of this experiment. But this experiment happened for how long? 1932 to 1972. 40 years of experimentation on the Negro male. For more than a hundred died as a result. <sighs> yeah. Just talking about the Skiggy. It's too real, too true, man. Too real, too true. You know, we're going to dismount into some flat drop. This is the last piece on the health drop we're going to get. This is a debate going on with a couple of news anchors and this, um, you know, a reporter named Kim Iverson. I played it on 432 to Drop Radio Live on our Shabbat show 2.0. Make sure you dig it on it right after Shabbat. Saturday nights, we popping off, you know, 930. 
you know what I'm saying? Just just be up in there, man. Or even before that, because we got a lot a lot of water flowing, a lot of flow happening before that. So make sure you tune in to 432 the drop radio, 432thedrop.com. <sighs> Let's go. I mean, my naga, imagine building and building, and then they come and sink you out. Now, all your droplets, now they got to find another land and another, I mean, just the incentive and the belief and their, another community they can build with. And they got to do all that from scratch. This is you. This is where you at. I'm just talking to Skiggy. Let's go, man. We're just talking to Skiggy. Headed towards a great flat drop dismount. Kim Iverson. Let's go. How are we doing on our time? <laughs> All right, cool. All right, cool, cool. You know me, man. You know me. Hey, these are drops. Welcome to the drop. If you're new here, this is what we do. We be popping off. Let's go. In October 7th, starting October. Again, we are not medical experts. Fair use in your caboose bone. We are not going against your experts. We are just seeing what these news anchors and these different reporters have to say. She found some data coming out of Israel. She wants to share, and they're going to debate it. We're not spreading nothing fake and false. We're just letting her pop off her data from Israel. And they're going to debate about it. As we have the freedom to do, no one's going against anybody's policy of experts. Because this has nothing to do with today. <laughs> this only has everything to do with Tuskegee. Let's go for the dismount. October 7th, patrons to bars, breweries, wineries, and nightclubs will need to show proof of at least one dose of the vaccine. From November 4th and onward, people will need to be fully vaccinated with two doses. This mandate does not include restaurants, shopping malls, movie theaters, and gyms, which, ma which makes this new mandate reminiscent of the illogical lockdown measures in early 2020. Now, if you remember, many places in the country allowed bars that served food to remain open, but if your bar didn't serve food, you have to stay closed because apparently somehow the virus stops spreading when you're eating and drinking, but continues to spread when you're just drinking. It's science. What's interesting about these new mandates is that L.A. doesn't have a big bar only culture. Most bars and many clubs are also restaurants and these mandates won't apply to them. We also have very few wineries and breweries that don't also serve food. So this announcement just feels like virtue signaling to the voters who supported Newsom and want to see more done to control the spread. On top of this, who will enforce these new mandates? The LAPD? You mean the same LAPD that has thousands of its employees and cops seeking vaccine exemptions? The same LAPD who has police officials suing the government over the Biden mandates? I get the feeling they won't be too keen on shaking down bar owners who refuse to card their patrons. Also part of these new mandates is that for any large event of over 10,000 people, such as a sporting event or concert, people will need to either show proof of a vaccine or a negative test. Showing a negative test result doesn't get you into a bar. So why did the Dodgers and Rams get to have such special treatment? The same question for movie theaters that play Hollywood movies. Why do they have no restrictions? I would love to take a poll to find out how many bar owners voted to recall Newsom compared to how many of the Hollywood elite and sports stars supported his campaign. What's most interesting about these mandates is that more and more people are becoming aware that the vaccines aren't necessarily stopping the spread. As people begin to find out that their coworker, aunt, friends and half the Yankees baseball team has quote unquote rare breakthrough cases, they begin to question the honesty of our health officials. Are they dishonest or do they just not know? Oh, they know. They have the data. And some honest news organizations are actually reporting on it. But rather than come out and be honest with us, they instead use doublespeak and try to tell us that the vaccine stopped the spread. But if you're fully vaccinated, you still need to wear a mask and social distance. On top of this, the CDC, Fauci, and mainstream news have begun to switch their narratives from the vaccine stopping the spread to the vaccine stopping hospitalizations and death. When I'm done with the flag, I honestly want to keep most of them. But at the same time, I also think I may have just hijacked. Now, listen to their words very carefully when they speak because these two things are not the same. One look at Israel's current spread levels, and we can see this virus shows no signs of slowing down, even as millions of people take their third dose of Pfizer vaccine. In Israel, people can't enjoy restaurants, bars, 
shopping centers, or any other non-essential service without being fully vaccinated. But the catch is they only consider you fully vaccinated if you've had three doses of the vaccine. Bang. I'm just talking to Ski. So to everyone who's like, man, I'm straight, man, you know, forget it, man. I'm good, you know. <laughs> they wouldn't even consider you fully, you know, hit up. You know what I'm saying? They wouldn't consider you fully hit up in Israel. You got two? Not not good enough. Oh, you ain't got all twelve? You got you got eight out of nine. You see how this is going? So you thought you just needed one, maybe two, and maybe a little a little boosty boost, you know? We're getting doctors telling us all kind of things, but we're not experts, and we're not trying to go against nobody's experts, and she's no expert, but she's talking about actual data that's about to hit the mainstream, she's saying, coming right out of the Biden camp. Now listen real close. Vaccine. Now that it's really clear to an increasing number of people that the virus is still spreading, People then say, well, you don't have the right to overwhelm hospitals, and that's the issue. But the data the health officials used to claim that 99% of the hospitalizations and deaths are in the unvaccinated is data that's cumulative from January through July. Well, how many people were vaccinated in January? What about February, March, or April? I mean, if nearly 100% of your population is unvaccinated, then guess what? You're going to get nearly 100 of your cases of your severe cases in the unvaccinated as well. Mm. That's how stats work. And that's exactly the argument people make in the reverse. When the numbers began showing a majority of cases within the fully vaccinated population, like in Massachusetts or in the recent college outbreaks, people say, well, as more and more people get vaccinated, the higher the percentage will be of cases within the fully vaccinated population. OK, it's true. The percentages don't matter because if one person out of 100 gets the virus and that person happens to be vaccinated, you can claim 100 percent of the cases are fully vaccinated. That's obviously using stats to skew the perception. But if you have more cases today than you did at the same time last year and yet a majority of your population is fully vaccinated and it's a majority of them catching the virus, how do you square that with the idea that these vaccines stop the spread? You can't. And our public health officials know this. Uh oh, we are not experts. But again, it's not about spread, they finally admit. It's about overwhelmed hospitals, which actually, I agree with this. I don't think we should look at cases, especially when most cases are either asymptomatic or mild. The only numbers they really should be looking at to gauge where we are in this pandemic are the ICU and death numbers. And now I can get the logic that if the ICUs are filling up with unvaccinated people and it's causing other people to not get the treatment they need, this is a serious issue. I can then understand that it's okay for fully vaccinated to get and spread the virus because they don't at least end up taking up one of those needed beds. I can then get that therefore only the vaccinated can do super spreader things because they won't get too terribly sick. Fine, I can actually see the logic in this line of thinking. But then that should go for the young and healthy as well, regardless of their vaccination status. Despite the fear-mongering news media who want to make it sound like people under 60 are struggling to survive, the stats simply aren't there. Kids are more likely to die of drowning, a car accident, or even gun violence before they die of COVID. And if we really... We're no experts. She's just breaking down data. No one's going against your experts. Let's go. If we want to limit the hospitals from overflowing, we could easily say it's the overweight and elderly causing the issue, not the unvaccinated. So maybe we should have a passport that counts our calories for us. If you go over your daily limit, no bar or nightclub for you. Too old? Get out of here. But I get it. We don't want to fat shame or discriminate based on age, so we'd rather demonize the unvaccinated instead. Hmm. But here's the problem. Political reports that the Biden administration has been given new data this week showing that the vaccine wears off. Not the previous reports that the vaccine still keeps you safe from severe disease. This data shows it significantly wears off even against the most severe of outcomes. And she's dropping data out of Israel. Then she's going to say that Israel, you know, we're we're about a few months behind Israel. And so she's following the trend of what's happening there, factoring in us being a few months behind that projecting where we might be in a few months and if this is what's coming and going on in israel today then she's like okay in a few months from now it might be happening here now she said something very key about something wearing off right 
Now that adds a different element. Because you didn't really factor that in, did you? <laughs> and if that's what their testing is showing in Israel, that something is wearing off and then causing some type of peak and more, you know, uh, more vital, more fatal situation later, you know what I'm saying, because of this wearing offness. We don't know any facts on this. We don't know how long it takes to wear off. We don't know, you know, any of these, um, you know, uh, parameters around this thing. But if it does wear off, if there's any of this stuff, you know, that they want us to get, you know, I'm just talking tenderoni <laughs> or, or uh, Tuskegee, <laughs> You know, if it wears off, you know what I mean, then how often do you need to get read up, you know? So you're going to get all this stuff for you and it might wear off and you still have other stuff in you and we don't know what's what what's to do with what. So she's reporting on data from Israel. We and she are not experts. She's just reporting on data that's coming through the Biden, you know, um, you know what I'm saying, Biden campaign, you know what I mean, Biden, you know what I mean? Biden administration, you know what I mean? So, very interesting stuff. If it wears off in six months, and then you're wide open for whatever else, right? So, these are interesting questions. These are the topics that we need to discuss because all of our health is on the line. Let's go. And we are about four months behind Israel in vaccinations. And in August, they saw their hospitals and morgues filling up with fully vaccinated people. This means the stats will shift. This fall and winter, we can begin to see hospitals filling up with fully vaccinated people as the vaccine wears off. Fully vaccinated people today will essentially be unvaccinated in the coming weeks and months. Will they then be restricted in the same way as someone who never took the vaccine? Whoa. Will we so what she's talking about now is there is now a new limbo, a new normal. A major part of the population that has never gotten hit up, that are clear of all this stuff and they don't want any association you know with anyone who might be spreading something to them like that any physical contact because they might be witnessing what's happening right we just went into this whole cdc zombie situation right so amazon zombie warning so based on observation in the future since we don't have anything else to go off of you know what i'm saying there might be a situation where you're like whoa I know you're not fully hit up, but since you got at least half them joints, I got to be a little wary of what might happen to you, of what's happening with you. You know, it might be beneficial for us not to have contact until we see what's going on. Some people might think like that. That's the separation. That's the dichotomy. But most not is going to be in between because they're going to wake up eventually. They're going to be like, yo, I can't get a 12 dose of whatever. I can't get the hundred booster. Nah, man, forget that. But you got 99 of them, <laughs> but you got 10 out of 11 of them, you know? I mean, even if you got two right now, we don't know what's going to happen. Right? So this is all stuff that we are wondering about based on her data, whatever you're getting hit with wears off, but we don't know what part wears off. You know what I mean? <laughs> we don't know what wears off really means. We don't know anything. So, you notice none of them really know anything. She's the only one coming with any type of facts. These other jabronis that are going to be their little talking points, you know, <laughs> straight hijacks, you know, they're going to come with just, you know, they're going to just repeat talking points. Well, don't you think it's safe and effective against most things? They're eventually going to be like, hey, well, you know, maybe it doesn't prevent anything, but you're going to wish you had it anyway because it's going to, you know, ease your pain. <laughs> it's going to, you know, you know, it's, it's going to help you with the symptoms a little bit. You know, it's going to have some effect. It's going to be pretty good. It's going to be all this pretty good talk. Well, it's still pretty good. You know, it's still good to have it. Like all this, man, we, we didn't sign up for pretty good. Y'all didn't promise us pretty good. You promised us something effective, right? You promised our people something effective, right? I'm just talking to Ski. They promised our people something effective, right? They got placebos. They had to suffer. I'm just talking to Skiggy. Let's go. Well, we see either a mandate for a booster dose, like we see in Israel. But in Israel, it looked like the booster was working and cases and hospitalizations began to fall. But then suddenly, within days, 
the number of cases shot back up to record never before seen heights. And the hospitalization rates have begun to climb back up as well. So is it even working? Mm. And if that's the question, then what's the risk of putting, you know, hypothetically, whatever, it, inside of you if you don't even know if it's working? And if if it's not work if if it's not doing that job, what job is it doing? I guess is the question. You know, if it's not going to be working to truly prevent anything and it just keeps wearing off, is it just ineffective or is it ineffective for that particular purpose that they're saying is for? And maybe it's still being, you know, enormously effective at whatever the real mission is. And that's what the question What's the real intention. You got to trust whoever you got to trust their intention. All right. We're just talking intentions. When I'm talking the center for the control. <laughs> we're saying, what was their intention in gathering over 400 Negro males? What was their intention by not informing these Nagas of the nature of the experiment? What was their intention after they saw start seeing them dying? And that's one fourth. That's 25 percent of their human subjects die. What's supposed to happen when you're in a test? Proper preparation should be made and adequate facilities provided to pr protect the experimental subject against even remote possibilities of injury, disability, or death. But was this done for my knockers? So I'm saying we're just talking to Skiggy and comparing these things, you know, like we are, you know, in our full right to do. Straight up, man. They've been burying our cities underground, burying our towns underground, and straight poisoning the indigenous Negro of America. We're supposed to just take it. We can't even talk about it. It's ridiculous, man. What's the intention? Looking at all this death. And you two, uh, to whom it may concern, don't act like me playing this is against some type of, you know, policy. I'm getting it off of YouTube. It's already on here. So if if it's against some policy, it shouldn't even be on here to begin with, right? But this has over 200,000 views on a channel with over a million views. You ain't messing with him. Don't come mess with me. I'm not adding to this. I'm talking to Skiggy. She's talking about data out of Israel. Back, back to whom it may concern. Fair use in your caboose bone. Let's go. Data and the new illogical mandates make many of us trust our health officials and government even less. Are we really following science or are we following fear? Are we really examining the data and making sound decisions based on that data? Or are we just pretending like we know it's going to work and then demanding it of everyone? Yeah, People are being demonized, segregated, and are being treated like second-class citizens while being screamed at to work together as one. So everyone wants to end this pandemic. No one wants to get sick or die. And no one wants their loved ones to get sick or die. But swarmy politicians issuing meaningless mandates to appease their voters is exactly how we're not going to end this, if we can even end it at all. So, Robbie, I'm. Uh, this is kind of similar to what you were talking about yesterday, where it seems like they're... Enter Robbie and Ryan. Straight up high tech city. Let's go. Man, you know, there's uh, rules for one and not rules for other. And this is very similar when we saw with the lockdowns in the, in the uh, spring of 2020 and now with these mandates where it's you know, it doesn't really seem to follow the science necessarily because why can you go to a restaurant, but now you can't go to a bar? That seems silly. Um, I mean, now, you know, the problem that I'm seeing is that the health officials dangled the carrot. And you were kind of talking about this yesterday where it's, hey, if you get the vaccine, now you can go back to living your life. And then when they switch it and they say, well, but no, you got to wear a mask and you got to socially distance, it kind right. of disincentivizes people, right? Right. So and, what, yeah. But they're getting data from Israel, right? They're, they're, they're seeing the data. They're getting the data. And this is why they're looking at it and they're saying, oh, crap. But they already said what they said. Yeah. So they can't go back on it. Yeah. And they, I mean, we can't go back to the, the, the idea of COVID zero. Like, it's never going to happen. We'll have to stay locked down for 100 years. So we have to give up on that. Uh, the, the cases can, like, Delta is much more contagious than the original strain. So people are st I still going they're going to get sick but everyone who wants to be don't it seem like they're going to make something 
seem way more contagious just so that they can offset the reason why these things are wearing off. They can say it's wearing off because this next one is so super duper much more contagious and everyone's going to get sick. When has anyone ever looked you in the eye and said everyone's going to get sick? What the hell? When has anyone looked the whole global, global, quote unquote, global population, the whole earth plane and say everyone's going to get sick? This shit sound creepy. Quite protected from severe hospitalization death. They can get vaccinated. I would support them getting people getting boosters if they want to. But you're absolutely right that we have to we have to move beyond the compelling people phase of this, the arbitrary rule phase, because they're not followed equally, they're not enforced equally, and they're at some to some degree they're so arbitrary they don't update themselves with the science, and they could go on for years. I remember when it was going to be remember two weeks to slow the spread. Remember we're just going to shut down for two weeks. Then okay, well we're going to shut down until we have a vaccine. Okay, we're going to shut down till most people have had the opportunity to take the vaccine. No, we're going to shut down to really like 90% of people have taken the vaccine. We're going to shut down forever. That's the reality unless we resist some of these things. Ryan, I actually want to ask you a question on this because you mentioned even before, and I, I agree with this, that, you know, one of the amazing things about NR mRNA technology, which I do think is a very fascinating technology that I think can have some real good benefit in the world. And you mentioned that, you know, what's great about it is, you know, typically with, with traditional virus uh, vaccines, you'd have to find the virus, you'd have to then make it inactive and put it in the solution. And, you know, it, it's a long process, but with mRNAs, they can get that code. And if, if they can sequence it, they can- Whoa, whoa, without whoa, Managa, just research. Recon mRNA vaccines. Or mRNA, I mean, just what they can do when they do sequence your code. Like, that's some interesting things right there. I'm just going to leave it on the table. This is something brand new. <laughs> She's four, so, you know, she got a lot of hijack you know, going on, too. But she at least is trying to kick some data, though. About a vaccine within days, right? Why haven't they then made a vaccine for the Delta variant? I mean, it makes me wonder if that is actually even possible. They sit there and say, oh, yeah, we can do this. Yet we're still given vaccines that are for the alpha variant, an outdated variant that no one's getting anymore. So why haven't they whipped this sucker out for Delta? My guess would be because the vaccine is extremely effective against hospitalization, severe disease and death when it comes to the, the when data. It, extremely effective against hospital hospitalization, severe disease and death. Now, remember how many times he repeats this for the next what, 10 minutes? We're going to go 10 more minutes on this. We're going to see it to the end. Why not? You know, this is an interesting dialogue, diatribe, right? So she's like, how come they haven't come up with a new thing? He said, well, I guess because the first one is so effective. <laughs> it gets extreme injury and death and all that. Well, come on, man. You think he's even real? This is like a robot, man. Let's go. So they can whip out a vaccine within days, right? Why haven't they then made a vaccine for the delta variant i mean it makes me wonder if that is actually even possible they sit there and say oh yeah we can do this yet we're still given vaccines that are for the alpha variant an outdated variant that no one's getting anymore so why haven't they whipped this sucker out for delta my guess would be because the vaccine is extremely effective against hospitalization severe disease and death is that an answer to our question is he answering a question i'm not an expert Clearly, he ain't an expert. She asked a straight up question. Why are we getting outdated stuff, according to her data? If there's a new variant, we should be have been got, got on that. She's all about getting the hit. She's all about it. So this is their number one fan. I mean, she's looking for that new hit, right? And they're spokesmen of the, <laughs> of the whole system of it all. And he's like, well, the reason why you haven't gotten the new joint that would actually help you with the new, you know, sickness, you know what I'm saying? The reason you ain't got the new joint is because the old joint is so effective against severe injury, disease, and death, Hospitaliz hospitalization, injury, and death. <laughs> she just said that old joint don't matter no more. He said, well, it's so effective against hospitalization, uh, sickness, and death. <laughs> Which one? She said it's a new variant, man. She, he didn't answer nothing. Anymore. So why haven't they whipped this sucker out for Delta? My guess would be because the vaccine is extremely effective against hospitalization, severe disease, and death. She just said it's outdated. 
when it comes that's to the, the data to now Delta. that they just got. So they're going to release this data. They're saying Politico said that the administration should be telling the public about this data either this week or next, but that the data they see says that it is it wears off significantly and that it's alarming. And Fauci even says, you know, whoa, this is a big. Well, I- yeah, man.